Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 189 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our ninth lesson, ninth video in the series of 15 on the topic of probability. The problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that we have three actors. We have three actors A, B and C. They're going to work independently to solve the problem. This is an important word. They're going to work independently. What does it mean? It simply means that it simply means that the odds of one person being successful or not successful has absolutely nothing to do with how the other two people perform. They all work independently. We are further told that the odds that A will be successful at solving the problem is one third. The odds are one fourth that B will be successful and there is a one fifth chance, 20% chance that Mr. C will be successful at solving the problem. Here are the questions. We're going to go through, we're going to go through multiple scenarios one by one. Here's the first question. So the first question is what, what, what is the probability, what's the probability that they all succeed? What's the probability that they all succeed? Sometimes they talk about solving a problem, some, sometimes talk, they talk about hitting a target. So, and, and of course if they're hitting a target, uh, how well one person is going to perform has nothing to do with how, the, how well the other two people are going to perform. And the question simply is, what are the odds that they all manage to succeed the target or they're all successful? Well, that's very simple. Because of the fact that they are independent, which is why this word is important, because of the fact that they are in, working independently, I don't mean to say they are independent, they are working independently, is what I meant to say. Therefore, the odds that they all succeed is simply the product of the product of the individual probability. It is simply the product of the individual likelihood of their success. The odds that A is going to be successful is one third. The odds that B is going to be successful is one fourth. And the odds that C is going to be successful is one fifth. That's it, we are done. 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, so it's 1 out of 60. The odds are 1 out of 60 that they will all succeed. Or, or, if you, or if you're speaking in terms of hitting a target, if they were to try 60 times, if they were to try 60 times, then on average, out of every 60 tries, you'll find one occasion where they will all, all three of them will manage to hit the target, given the fact that one person has only a 33% chance of hitting the target, the other one we were told has 25% chance of hitting a target and the other one has 20% 20, 20 chance of hitting a target. Let's keep, keep going. Second question is the asking is what are the odds? What's the odds that no one succeeds? What are the odds that no one succeeds? Well that's pretty straightforward, very simple. No one succeeds. We do the exact same thing as before except now we're talking about these people being successful as opposed to this people, these people being not successful as opposed to their success. The odds that they are not going to be successful, we take those odds and we multiply them. The odds that A is not going to be successful, this is how we write it, A with, A with the bar on the top, that means the odds that A is not going to be successful times the odds that B is not going to be successful times the odds that C is not going to be successful. Those are the odds that, they, that none of them will succeed. The same exact thing thing here, except here the, we're looking at the odds of their being not successful, and here we're looking at the odds of uh, these people being successful. So, what are the odds that A is not going to be successful? Well, we are told that there is a one-third chance that A will be successful, therefore there is a two-third chance that A will not be successful. We were told that B has one-quarter chance of being successful, therefore there is a three-quarter chance that he will not be successful. And lastly, we are told that the chances that C will be successful is 1 out of 5, therefore there is a 4 out of 5 chance. There is a 4 out of 5 chance that C will not be successful. That's it, we are done. We see a 3 here, that goes away. We see a 4 here, that goes away. We are left with 2 over 5. 2 over 5, which means there is a 40% chance. There is a 40% chance that these people will, all of these, none of these people will succeed. If they all three try, all three of them try, two out of five times they will all fail they will all fail I'm just curious two out of five is what we found here here we had one out of sixty let's multiply it twelve times I want to I want to find out something 
If you multiply top and bottom by 12, what we end up is 24, 24 over 60. So this is interesting. So if all of these three people were to try 60 times, if they were to try 60 different occasions, out of 60, on average, they expect to find one occasion where they will all succeed, one out of 60. But if they were to try 60 times, on 24 occasions they will find that none of these three people will succeed. None of these three people will succeed. So it is 24 times more likely that none of them will succeed as it compared to the compared to the scenario where they will all succeed. It's 24 times likely. You see, 1 out of 60, 24 out of 60. Let's do one more. Let's keep on going. Part C. Part C, we're looking about what are the odds? What are the odds that that at least at least at least one will succeed? The odds that at least one will succeed is equal to is simply one minus the chance one minus the chance that they all fail. If we take away if we take away the probability of a scenario where they all fail, then whatever is left over from 100%, one minus the probability that they all fail will leave us what will leave us with the situations where at least one of them will succeed. Now, at least one of them will succeed is exactly exactly what it says. There is, of course, also a chance that two of these three people might succeed, or all three of them may succeed, and that is all incorporated in it. One minus the R that they they will all fail will leave us with the situations that at least one of them will succeed. We already know what are the odds for for the for for, 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 for this scenario. None of them will succeed. We just found it is two out of five. This this thing is two out of five, so it's simply one minus two fifth. That leaves you with three fifth or sixty percent. So there is a sixty percent chance that if they were to try three out of five times, at least one of them will manage to hit the targets. Or out of every th every out of every five tries on three different occasions, at least one person will hit the target. Let's keep on going. Now we're going to get into a little bit more, more, more of a involved scenario. Answer part D. What are the odds that not at least? It says at least one. Okay. Make sure you pay attention to the language. We're not talking about at least one. Now we are talking about a situation that exactly one succeeds. What are the odds that exactly one person will succeed? So this is what I want you to compare. This scenario D, D with C, in C we talked about situations that at least one of them will succeed, which is simply one minus the odds that they will all fail. What are the odds that exactly one succeeds? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Exactly one. We need the room for it. We're gonna have, I'm going to have to erase this second part here. Let's first set it up. The odds that at least one of them will succeed. No, not sorry, not at least one of them. The odds that exactly one of them will succeed is exactly that. We are looking at the situation, scenarios where only one person succeeds. Exactly one person succeeds, which means two of them have to fail. Two of them will have to fail, which means there are three different scenarios. There are three different possibilities where two of them will fail. There are three people. Either A will A will succeed or B will succeed or C will succeed. That's all there is. So if A succeeds, so here we're looking at here we, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna stop writing the P for the probability because it takes too much time. So there is a situation that A will succeed and B and C will fail. That's one possibility. So there we go, exactly one succeeds, exactly one right here. A this this situation A is successful, or we have a situation that B succeeds and A and C will fail. Or we may have a situation that that C succeeds. C succeed and A and B fall. That's all. And all you have to do is find out the probability of all, all of these three scenarios and add them up. That's all. And the probability of these three situations is simply the product of their individual probability because these are independent event. Let's find out, shall we? We need the room, we need to raise all of this. It's very straightforward, very simple. So what are the odds? What are the odds? As I said, I'm going to stop writing the P here. Well, if you, it's not a big deal actually if you want to write this, this is what we're looking at. The odds that A will fail, but B will succeed, and C will fail. The odds that A will fail, B will fail, and C will succeed. Which is simply the odds that A will succeed, which is one-third, times the odds that B will fail, 
B has a chance, one quarter chance of being successful, so he has a three quarter chance of failing. C has one fifth chance of being successful, so he has four fifths chance of failing. That's the first part. We move on. The R that A will fail is two thirds. The R that C will fail is four fifths. No, not four fifths. This is where you have to slow down. It's not four fifths, it's one quarter, so it's three quarters. I was confused with that one. Oh, sorry, I have to pay attention. You see, this is where people make mistakes. I am not paying attention. I'm doing a horrendous job. Let's, let's start again. The odds that A will not be successful is two-third because he has one-third chance of being successful. Therefore, he has two-third chance of not being successful. Here, we're looking at the probability that B will be successful. The odds that B will be successful is one quarter. Because it has a check mark on it, you see. The odds that C will not be successful is four-fifths. Finally, the odds that A will not be successful is two-thirds. The odds that B is not B is not going to be successful is going to be four fifth or three quarters, because it's one quarter. And the odds that C will be successful is one fifth. And we just have to add them all up. We see a 3 here, and we see a 3 here, we see a 4 here, we see a 4 here, so this is just 1 fifth. Plus, we see a 4 here and 4 here, so it's 2 over 15. 2 over 15. Plus, we see a 3 here and 3 there, we see a 2 here and 2, 4 here, so it's 2 times 5, which is 110. Let's continue. We need the room. No, we just need the common denominator and add them all up, that's all. The common denominator of 15 and 5 and 10, we can use 30 as the common denominator. I'm not sure if it's the least common denominator, but 30 is the common denominator here, we can use it. I think 30 is going to be the least one. So it is the least common denominator, 30. So let's multiply top and bottom by 6, so make it 30 at the bottom here. Let's multiply this top and bottom by 2, so make this one 30. And let's multiply this one top and bottom by 3. There we go, now we have 30 as the common denominator. So it's just 6 times 1 which is 6, plus 2 times 2 which is 4, plus 1 times 3 which is 3, over 30. 4 plus 6 is 10, so it's just, it's simply 13 over 30. That's the probability, that is the exact probability that exactly one person would manage to hit the target and the other two will fail. Let's do the last one. Why don't you do the next one yourself? What are the odds exactly two will succeed? Do it yourself. Exactly two will succeed. What are the odds that exactly exactly two will succeed? Same exact procedure. Do it yourself. Again, when we're talking about when we're talking about exactly two people being successful, well, there are three different uh, situations where two people will, su will be successful. If two, exactly two people have to be successful, which means either A will have to fail, or B will have to fail, or C will have to fail. That's all it is. So that's what we look at here. So this is part E. What are the odds exactly two will succeed? So we simply have A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and we're looking about a situation that exactly two of them succeed. That means Either C will succeed or B will, uh, either C will fail or B will fail or A will fail. That's all. These are the probability we're looking for. That's it. Now we look at the individual probability and uh, multiply them out, just like we did before. The odds that A will succeed is one third. The odds that B will succeed is one quarter. The odds that C will fail is four fifth. So that takes care of that part. R that A will succeed is one third. The R that B will fail is three quarters. The R that C will succeed is one fifth. The R that A will fail is two third. The R that B will succeed is one quarter. And the R that C will succeed is one fifth. And that's all it is. We just have to simplify it. 
We see a 4 here and a 4 there, that 4 goes away and we have 3 times 5 which is 15. So we end up with 1 over 15 plus we see a 3 here and 3 here that goes away and we end up with 4 times 5 which is going to be 1 over 20 plus we see a 2 here and 4 here that 2 is going to go away with this 2, this 4 and the 2 times 5 is going to be 10, 10 times 3 is 30, 1 over, 1 over 30. Let's see, what can we use as a common denominator? Obviously we cannot use 30 as a common denominator. 30 would work with 15 and 30 would work with 30, but 30 is not going to work with 20. Let's use 60 as a common denominator. Let's use 60 as a common denominator, make it a 60, multiply top and bottom by 3, it becomes 60. Let's multiply this guy top and bottom by 4, so this becomes 60. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2, so this guy becomes 60. Now, they all have the same denominator, they all have the common denominator, the common denominator of 60. So we end up with 4 times 1 which is 4, 3 times 1 which is 3, and 1 times 2 which is 2 over 60, and that gives us 7 plus 2 is 9, 9 over 60, we can't leave it like that, 9 over 60, we can't leave it like that, we can't leave it like this, we have to reduce it, let's divide top and bottom by 3, it becomes 3 over 20, 3 over 20, and if you want, if you're so inclined, if you want to express that as percentage, multiply top and bottom by 5, and that gives us 15 over 100, 15 over 100, which means the answer is, this is getting too confusing here. I'm just going to write this as 9 16. I'm just going to write that as 9 over 60 and leave it like that. 9 over 60 reduces to 3 over 20, multiply top and bottom by 5, so we end up with 15 over 100. So the answer is 15%. How likely it is? How likely is it? How how likely is it that exactly two people will succeed in this in this situation in, in with this probability? The answer is there is a 15% chance. There is a 15% chance that exactly two will succeed, and one will fail. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye now.